The essential feeling of the movie Aliens is that everything is falling apart. That's exactly what Aliens Fireteam Elite is going for. You start out a confident marine as you head into a xenomorph-infested facility, but slowly, you find yourself more and more overwhelmed as you fight through swarms of aliens. As ammo and medpacks deplete at key moments, you start to get a bit worried. Then, at the end of the mission, you're stuck standing in front of an elevator, knowing that as soon as you hit the button to call it and make your escape, the aliens will come for you. Even with full ammo and defensive tools like sentry guns and mines, you're about to be in a fight for your life. It's this aspect of Aliens, the 1986 James Cameron movie, that most games based on the film struggle to capture or miss altogether. In the movie, the Colonial Marines lose. They spend most of their time getting picked off, trying to defend against overwhelming odds, and running for their lives. In the eight or so hours of Aliens Fireteam Elite we played in a preview build, the game did a pretty good job of distilling that sensation into a cooperative third-person shooter. No matter how well equipped you are, you're going to find yourself starting to sweat as threats close in from all sides. You create your own marine in Fireteam Elite and join a team of up to two other players, or AI bots if you want to play alone, dispatched to investigate a Wayland yutani mining operation that has gone dark. At launch, the game takes place over four three-chapter campaigns, with each chapter lasting around 20 to 25 minutes. The overall feel of Fireteam Elite is similar to Left 4 Dead, with you and your teammates moving through an area and trying to accomplish objectives while constantly being attacked by waves of enemies. Our preview gave us a glimpse at the first two campaigns of the game. As you discover in the first campaign, the faceless but always evil Wayland yutani Corporation has uncovered something on the surface of planet LV-895, and they've used it to start some pretty dumb-sounding experiments to mutate xenomorphs. That quickly creates a situation in which you see a mess of new kinds of aliens that haven't appeared in the films before. Why is it glowing? Fireteam Elite quickly throws creatures at you that will spit acid from a distance, rush forward to explode, or hide on ceilings and in corners to leap out and pin you to the ground. The game also adds in some of the tougher variations from other games and movies, like the human-like drone from Alien Isolation or the deadly warrior from Aliens. It all means you have a variety of creatures that require you to quickly change your focus as a team to put down the most pressing threats, all while the room fills with more and more sleek monsters. You do have plenty of ways to fight back, though. Iconic Aliens weapons like the Pulse Rifle, Smart Gun, flamethrower, and pump-action shotgun are at your disposal. Your loadout in a given mission is determined by the class you choose at its start. Gunners will remind you of rank-and-file marines like Hicks with their pulse rifles and backup shotguns. Demolishers carry smart guns that can rip through hordes quickly. Technicians rely on close-quarters weapons but carry a sentry gun that they can deploy over and over again. And docs get a pulse rifle but give up a stronger secondary weapon in favor of a deployable item that can heal teammates. Each class is unique in ways that allow you to coordinate with your team. They all have different abilities that have cooldown timers, which can buff the entire team at key moments. Gunners can make everyone fire and reload their guns more quickly, while demolishers can damage lots of enemies at once while gaining a damage boost. The technician's sentry guns convey a defense buff to anyone nearby, and docks can boost everyone's reload and movement speeds. There are also a host of consumables that you can buy between missions or find in crates at key moments, which give you tactical options for defending positions with special types of ammo, as well as the aforementioned mines and turrets. The further we got into Fireteam Elite, the more our squad had to work together to find the best strategies to survive. Sentry deployed. The first campaign sends you to an orbital refinery called Katanga in search of a survivor, and it's not unlike the refinery towed by the Nostromo in the 1979 film Alien. It's also absolutely overrun with xenomorphs, thanks to Wayland yutani meddling. By the end of the campaign, you're escorting the survivor out, working to keep him alive along with the rest of your team as you run for a dropship under constant alien threat. In the second campaign, you head down to the planet's surface, where you start to uncover what the company has found. Here, 
Fireteam Elite starts to bridge with the newer Alien films, Prometheus and Alien Covenant. As you explore vast caverns created by Prometheus's progenitor race, the white-skinned engineers. Wayland yutani gets serious about protecting what it has found there, and in the second campaign, a variety of synthetic soldiers join the fray alongside the aliens. These include gun-wielding combat synths and engineering-focused working Joes of Alien Isolation, illustrating the ways that Fireteam Elite is drawing from all corners of the franchise to fill out its world. In these missions, combat changes significantly. You'll usually either stand your ground or constantly relocate to fight the mostly close-range aliens, but the synth soldiers carry guns, which turns Fireteam Elite into a cover shooter. But the game also mixes these threats together, and even has the aliens fighting the synths. So your strategy has to constantly change based on what's trying to kill you. And if you're smart, you'll find ways to let your enemies kill each other. It's clear throughout Fireteam Elite that developer Cold Iron Studio has a full command of the alien universe, and its combination of elements makes the world of the Colonial Marines feel much more fleshed out. Collectible lore items you can find fill in background elements like the political situation between the Marines' government, the United Americas, and corporations like Wayland yutani They also bring in deep cuts from the franchise lore, such as the Union of Progressive Peoples, the Soviet bloc successor faction that first appeared in author William Gibson's unproduced Alien 3 screenplay. It also seems like there's a lot more going on with the inclusion of the engineers, even though our preview didn't allow us to uncover more of their secrets. The ability to go deeper into the story and world of Aliens pairs with a strategic focus that broadens as you play. Leveling up your Marine unlocks more gear to try, allowing you to customize your loadout, add attachments to weapons that make them more effective, and provide bonuses that align with specific playstyles. A magazine upgrade for your pulse rifle can increase your ammo stock, for instance, but it might also make the gun reload faster when fully empty or fire with more stability. You can also switch those guns out altogether, swapping your pulse rifle for a burst rifle or your shotgun for a flamethrower. You'll need to pick which upgrades and which weapons work best for you and the way you play. You'll also unlock perks for your character classes as you level them up, many of which can be mixed and matched between those classes to allow for even more customization. It's an expansive system that we only saw a glimpse of, but it seems like it could potentially offer a lot of different ways to create your own personal marine. There are also challenge cards you earn as you play and use to add modifiers to missions that sometimes make things easier, but mostly increase the difficulty by making you take more damage, restricting your weapons, killing your motion tracker, or forcing you to hit headshots. Fighting through those drawbacks earns you a big boost to your experience point gains if you complete a mission. Coupled with the game's internal AI, which changes what kinds of enemies you run into and where, it's a system that seems like it can really help vary Fireteam Elite's missions in some big ways. All these variations are meant to give you good reasons to replay the campaigns in Aliens Fireteam Elite, and the question is whether the game can keep players coming back. While Fireteam Elite created some really harrowing moments for our group over several hours of play, it did feel like it fell into a bit of a repetitive pattern of moving from place to place and setting up defensive positions. That said, we only saw two campaigns, and across those two, Fireteam Elite provided a bunch of different enemies and challenges to deal with, and the story suggests that things will only get more intense as you go on. So it'll be interesting to see how Fireteam Elite keeps players engaged long term. With unlockable weapons, attachments, perks, and cosmetic items, there are at least a lot of ways to continually customize your character and things to chase along the way. It also seems like Fireteam Elite is in a unique position to tell an expansive, evolving alien story through a live service game approach. For Aliens fans, that's a pretty exciting prospect. And our early look at Fireteam Elite suggests there's a lot that Cold Iron Studios can draw on to continue to throw threats at Colonial Marines that will have them endlessly fighting for their lives.